my peoples, what's up? Welcome to Shelf Stories, the channel that tells tales from games, books, and life. I am your host, Jason. Thank you so, so much for stopping by for this latest episode of Good Trouble, the series where I engage in above-the-table conversation that I feel is necessary in the board gaming space in the spirit of education and compassion. Another day, another game I get to talk about here on Good Trouble. Uh, this time it is for a project that has just launched a Kickstarter as I record and post this episode in September of 2021. Uh, it is the Stefan Feld City Collection. Stefan Feld being a very noteworthy uh, Euro game designer. Uh, whose games I have not <laughs> very much played, not too, not too familiar with it. That is not how my gaming tastes go. Uh, but the project uh, came to my attention, uh, particularly for the ad campaign that was attached to uh, Marrakesh. Marrakesh being uh, one of the uh, big titles uh, that was offered in the city uh, collection here. Uh, Marrakesh being one of the cities in Morocco, in North Africa. A lot of issues of cultural appropriation were raised, uh, so I'd like to explore them. Uh, and as I try to do on Good Trouble, uh, not just, you know, kind of <laughs> set things on fire, even though I might want to in the very initial uh, things that I see of it, but um, I like to process this stuff. I like to, you know, go through uh, the critical thinking, see things case by case, and use, in this particular case, a framework. Uh, a framework being, uh, is this game an example of cultural appropriation, which is a bad thing, or cultural appreciation, which is a better thing. But before I go ahead and break all that down for you, please, uh, this is Shelf Stories. This is my personal pet project where I uh, spread the word about culture and history and mental health and all sorts of above the table gaming goodness. Uh, every single subscription counts. Please subscribe uh, to the channel, like this video. No Patreon, no uh, PayPal or any of that kind of stuff, no contributions. I'm gonna try to keep the channel completely free for as long as I possibly can. Uh, you can support by far following and watching and sharing uh, what I'm doing every single time any, anybody does any of those things, I truly and deeply appreciate it. All right, so let's get into it. This is not any uh, game that I would normally pay attention to, just not being a Euro person. Uh, it came to my attention uh, via Twitter, uh, something that the Queen uh, Games Twitter account uh, put out. They're the publisher of the Stefan Feld City Collection, uh, and that was the tweet. Uh, it was, uh, this is a designer himself, Stefan Feld, dressed in a Moroccan getup, fez and all. Uh, presumably leading some kind of camel or beast or burden or, or whatever that is. Uh, that, you know, caused a little bit of a kerfuffle on Twitter. You, you're probably used to these uh, kerfuffle at this point. Uh, in particular, uh, Efka Blatikas from um, No Pun Included, thank you very much for the retweet, uh, brought this to everybody's attention, including mine. And, you know, basically saying, you know, this what's what's going on here? This is not acceptable. Uh, this is totally culture appropriation. This is very, you know, whatever whatever was said. You can go ahead and read the uh, the, the summary tweets. I, you know, I'm saying, okay, that's uh, good to note. <laughs> you know, but I wanted to give it a couple of days and see how the publisher responded and, you know, kind of see how things played out. The Kickstarter launches I, uh, today as I'm recording this episode. Uh, and not only has the image not been taken down, apparently uh, it is a part of a set of trading cards that you can get uh, if you back at a certain level uh, of the uh, campaign. <sighs> One of these pictures doesn't really fit, does it? And <laughs> so... It, it causes that central question. Is this cultural appropriation? Is this uh, just, you know, taking from a culture, not borrowing? You know, cultural appropriation is uh, very specific in what we mean by it. It is not just borrowing, taking from it and profiting. And you, you all know me. I get a little passionate. I had my initial reaction. To, <laughs> I admit it. But I want to try to get past that and come to a deeper understanding and analysis of what's going on. Uh, and I'm trying to, you know, look at the arguments of the other side, you know, because there's always a, a conversation that happens. And I think that when it comes to uh, defending this, uh, you know, approach to a game making, not just this game, but in general, uh, there's this idea that, you know, humans borrow. We have borrowed for the entirety of our history. Part of what it means to be human is to share and, you know, interchange, you know, your cultural stuff, my cultural stuff. That's how we get new cultural stuff is by that, that free exchange of ideas and by labeling every instance of borrowing as appropriation. We're kind of like uh, sticking a flame what, you know, in a thing that is naturally uh, human and we all we all do all the time. 
right? Uh, so in this particular case, this example of borrowing is respectful. Goes the you know this the defense of this. I'm looking at four games over here: Marrakesh, a city in Morocco, standing amongst New York, Amsterdam, Hamburg, great cities themselves. So just it just a this is a nod to respect. And so when we talk about cultural appreciation, one of the things we're talking about is a respectful uh, borrowing and a respectful interchange. And what's more respectful than, you know, a, naming one city as one of the great cities of the world? So that speaks well for it. Another thing that speaks well for this particular um, project is that Marrakesh uh, is, and Morocco in general is not quite doesn't quite fit into this idea of like, okay, there's a Western world and there's, you know, a non-Western world. And there's a big divide between the two, uh, especially uh, uh, in modern Moroccan history. I'm not, I'm no expert, but just, you know, what I know of world history, uh, Morocco has been a, you know, a faithful partner, enthusiastic partner. Uh, they applied for a membership into the EU at one point. They were denied because they're not actually in uh, European territory. It's more Northern Africa, but that's an indicator that a, um, a symbiosis or some kind of interchange was desired. It isn't just like, you know, a, a powerful country, you know, kind of weighing down on a, a lesser country. Uh, you know, obviously there's that stuff at play because it's a colonial history, but the, the point is that it's complicated. And so, you know, the, the framing of, you know, here is a, yeah, another case of like a bigger taking from a smaller uh, doesn't quite fit in terms of the particular case of Morocco. Fair. All right. And, you know, so where there is a, a, some kind of willingness to interchange, we can say that it's more of an appreciation type model. So, you know, so far, so good. Right. All right. So that was some of the arguments that would might be made along an appreciative lens that looks at the cultural interchange here positively. Uh, I think that there is a way in which uh, this is not so positive and it and falls more under the appropriative end of things. Uh, I'll articulate two ways that I think it does that. Number one, I'll go back to this image. It's a stereotype. Plain and simple. Um, it falls under a political philosophy that we call Orientalism. Orientalism is an approach that says whenever um, or like uh, the tendency is, I should say that, when Western creators, artists, um, you know, inventors, thinkers uh, in the Western tradition, so we're talking Europe and America, are looking at the East uh, that we're looking at it through, you know, we see ourselves as vibrant and, you know, historical, uh, but that is static and ahistorical and doesn't change. You know, there is a Morocco and that is Morocco in this particular case. So you know, looking at the outfit, is it from the 18th century, 19th century, 21st century? It doesn't matter in our, in our perception. That's Morocco and, you know, that's all we have to know. In a appreciation model, there is not only a respect shown, there's also a prompt to learning and the dispelling of ignorance about the other because it's so easy to be ignorant about, uh, you know, people who are different from us. And so any chance that we get to learn genuinely how real people, uh, you know, live and in a way learn something about ourselves, that's a genuine positive, uh, you know, cultural interchange, even where there's borrowing. Right. As long as there's that, you know, not only respect, but respectful learning and, and engagement with one another's culture, it's good. Is that happening here? Stereotypes kind of make that impossible. Uh, stereotypes are lazy. You know, they're kind of the brain's way of just short circuiting, you know, actually encountering a living thing and just like, you know, oh, there it is. Um, you know, I understand as a, a Reddit poster said, you know, uh, y'all think of uh, us as, you know, just walking around in an eternal sandstorm leading camels all over the place. Uh, and, you know, if that's the way we're going to uh, think about it, then that's not genuine cultural interchange. That's actually appropriative. And that leads you to my second aspect, because when you think of that stuff as an essentialized way, exotic, exoticized, you know, like, oh, they wear funny hats. It's not just like a hat. It's a funny hat, right? When they're exoticized and essentialized like that, they become easier to take and profit off of. Ultimately, at the end of the day, uh, appropriation is about not just about sharing, it's about profiting from it. It's about using an image in our own interest and not to the beneficial interest of you know both parties in the exchange. 
how do I know that this is a case of one party benefiting? I, I mean, I'm looking at the, uh, there's not a lot of information about who produced the game, but I'm not seeing a lot of representation from, uh, you know, genuine Moroccan side. And also, you know, here on the Kickstarter page, I see the available languages into which is this, these going to be translated. No Arabic. Uh, you know, that's the language of the land. It's, uh, you know, over 90% is a uh, Sunni Arab Muslim. Uh, so that is uh, telling me that this is uh, more of a one-way street over here. And by the way, that price, ooh, man. <laughs> Not exactly a product for the masses now, is it? All right, so let me uh, address a couple of questions that I feel might come up. I've had a couple of these conversations before about cultural appropriation, and so uh, patterns of argument emerge uh, in these different areas. So let me try to address that as I can. Uh, first of all, there is a lot of cultural borrowing that's happening here, and not just from Morocco. No, it's a Eurocentric design, and they're borrowing from New York. Uh, that's not a natural one-to-one, -one. and you know you see the image of New York. It's also you know kind of a stereotyped turn of the century uh, type image. Uh, so what makes that different? Why is it that, you know, why are we criticizing all? Why, why is it all cultural appropriation? And therefore, you know, it shouldn't really matter. It goes back to the point of like, you know, humans borrow. There is a difference. I'm from New York, so I'm very aware of, you know, that, you know, that New York patrimony. And that's the image that I get, you know, in terms of a real life analog. And then you go to the Moroccan uh, context and this is the real life analog there's a difference i know there's folks out there that are going to say well there's no difference no there is a difference uh when it comes to the uh so i'll talk about america and europe you know since the revolutionary time there has been you know interchange there has been you know trading and agreements and you know uh cultural exchange you know, both ways that has happened between the Americans and the Europeans. So where there is this kind of jokey thing, it's like, all right, we'll just put it in the pile with all the rest of the interactions. Uh, you know, that's all fine. But when it comes to the Western world and non-Western peoples, I did allow that the Moroccan context is complicated. And so I'm not going to say uh, uh, anything about the game itself, but this particular image leans on the imperialist aspect the taking of stuff now you know uh, because of the history of appropriation because of the history of looking at something essentializing it which is what orientalism is and saying okay i'm going to take this and oh it's pleasing to my audience it makes them laugh it makes them smile i'm going to use that and put it on my box and sell the game with that that is an imperialism exchange it's now we're in a, in a much more of a mode of unequal and does this particular game, uh, you know, commit that sin? I don't know. But there's a context. There's a history that should be respected. And so that, that becomes the difference. And maybe you don't buy that argument, but that is the line of argument that is going to be said. There is a context. It matters. All right, so two more quick things before I end the video. Uh, first of all, what's the big deal? Uh, it's, you know, not appropriation, it's not appreciation. Just be, don't even, like, think about this. This is games, you're thinking about it too hard. Uh, and, you know, this, this person's just dressing up and having fun. Uh, you know, if, if you're thinking about culture, then, you know, uh, a Moroccan person can dress up as an American. <laughs> you know, this all is too much thinking. Just, just have fun. Just drop it. I think about it like a joke. You know, if you want to think about it that way, there are jokes that can be hammered into the ground. There are jokes that can be told over and over again to the point where they're not funny anymore. And, you know, I've been at this a year, uh, uh, but, you know, a lot of people in the board gaming space uh, and just me as a consumer watching this stuff, and this happens over and over and over again. When you get, you know, well, it's just a frog and it's just a, you know, a dress or it's just an image or it's just this, just a, just a, just a, just a. Eventually, he gets tired of it. You know, fine, it's a joke, but, you know, like any joke, it doesn't, it stops becoming funny after you tell it over and over and over again. And, you know, this being played for laughs, it's only being played for laughs in a smaller and smaller group, uh, audience, you know, they happen to be at the center of the board gaming hobby, so there's a very loud, uh, you know, kind of pushback to any challenges to this. But the the people that are thinking that this is kind of thing is funny is definitely shrinking and shrinking. And, you know, at, cert at a certain point, we're right to ask, well, when are we going to stop telling this joke? When are we going to just, you know, not do the culturally appropriate th thing that's played for laughs, you know? Uh, so, yeah, at least in terms of the image, 
I really, I really sincerely hope that uh, Queen Games or whoever's involved in the production considers a different direction. That is not cancellation. That is editing, people. Just edit it out. And th there's so many ways that you could do that representation and give give the people what they want. Uh, you know, in terms of something that is respectful for other people, but also makes the particular fans happy. Use your imagination. Don't just rely on the lazy tropes. That's number one. Number two is the broader question of. Well, there's a reason I wore this shirt over here. American cultural imperialism. I've had that when I when it happened in Puerto Rico when I you know criticized Puerto Rico, and it comes up a lot. These Americans were n were never happy. We always have something to say. Everybody got along. Everybody, you know, in terms of you know this, these these games until the Americans started to pipe up and ruin everything, making everything about race and culture and division, all this kind of stuff. Stop imposing your American mores on the rest of the world. My response to that, and I've responded to that in, in the, at the time, and I'll continue to elaborate on this response. This, you know, this particular thing might be thought of as a, a European cultural sensibility. And there was a famous board game designer that kind of said it that way. Like this was this is European cultural sensibility, but we're coming, we're becoming more like the Americans, right? As if we're like we're infesting or anything. I think it's more properly thought of as European cultural imperialism. The idea that cultures exist and can be appropriated, just stripped of its natural, you know, uh, context, stripped of the living people that are a part of it, and, you know, essentialized, you know, kind of you know, almost like you, know, you take the product, you shrink wrap it, and you take it, and then you sell it to something else. Or you, you get some sort of personal benefit that doesn't actually benefit the places that you are, that you pulled the thing from. This is old. This has been happening since, uh, since imperialism has been a thing. And is it, you know, actual uh, riches that are being stolen, as was in the case in the, in the uh, age of, you know, imperialism? Not so much anymore. Uh, we're starting to move away from that, but we see vestiges of that idea that, you know, especially that European patrimony, and, and I see it very much with Euro design, unfortunately, where, you know, the Euro designer kind of looks at the world and sees a big wheel that we can just borrow, uh, you know, and put uh, on our and on their games for sales. They're for sales. Easily, the, any all these European designers can be like, you know what, I'll just invent cities. I'll and you know I'll put it in space. I put it underground. I put it anywhere we want. But the idea that the borrowing from real world cities is for sales, and it's an imperialist mindset. And are so are are we doing American imperialism by questioning this? I would contend that we are critiquing European cultural imperialism. I want to have that conversation. I don't just want to sit here lobbing grenades and saying, okay, you're bad or I'm bad or whatever it is. I want to have a robust conversation. So once again, I, I would like to invite, if anybody's a European game designer or uh, you know someone who thinks deeply about culture and how it's playing out in the board gaming space, please um, you know, reach out to me and I will be very willing to open shelf stories and have that conversation and, ha and open that uh, to others. You know, who wants to contribute in the comments, you know, and all that kind of thing. And then there's the $64,000 question. Do I want the entire project canceled? And, you know, is this cancel culture or whatever, whatever. I've said my piece in previous videos about cancel culture. I think that is such the wrong frame. This is a criticism. This is a re definitely a critique of the stereotype that is presented. And so I'm more focused on the image, the actual game. We can have further conversations about the game. But I wish the game the best. I, I wish any game. The best, uh, you know, I, I truly feel it's in terms of the larger cultural appropriation discussion that we need that needs to be a product of an ongoing conversation. Future games, future products, uh, more thinking has to be done. I'd rather that be done there in terms of you know the games themselves, but then these particular things like the ad over here is something that I would like to uh, think is a little bit more easy to rethink and say, you know what, do we really have to do this? That's my invitation uh, to anyone listening. So uh, that's the video. If you could change your mind, you can change the world, people. So until next time, later, everybody.